this unit, guys, it's going to be all about exponents. And we're going to start with just some basic exponent properties today. You had them, but it was probably at the beginning of last year. And we may or may not remember those. So let's just start with the basics. I have a 2 with a little 3 by it up there. If I want to talk about labeling this, what would we call the 2? It starts with a B. What do we call the bigger number? The base, yeah. The bigger number is the base. So we start talking about exponent rules today. The word base is going to get used quite a bit. Okay, the word base is going to use quite a bit. So then what do we call that little 3 hanging out up there? The exponent, yeah. The exponent. Now, this piece you may or may not know. If I have a base and an exponent together, I put the whole thing together. Anybody remember what that's called? It starts with a P. Power. A power. Very good. You people know their vocab stuff with exponents. Awesome. Now, what I want you to jot down for me, though, without using the calculator, take just a second. Jot down, what does 2 to the 3rd mean? You can just use numbers, totally fine. You don't have to write me a sentence. What does 2 to the 3rd actually mean? Just take a second. Jot it down. What do you think 2 to the 3rd means? Don't punch it in the calculator. 2 to the 3rd. What do you guys think? All right, somebody out there, what do you think? 2 to the 3rd, what does it mean? Oh, Molly's saying shot right. What do you got? It means 8. Yep, it's going to equal 8, but how do I get 8? 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 times 2. And yes, it does equal 8. So now I made sure you all had a calculator in front of you. So please, on the calculator, before we get into the rules and things, I want to make sure the calculator you're using, you know how to enter exponents in on that. Some calculators and I don't have a ton up here to show. Some calculators have, a lot of them do. If I have my calculator up here, see if it will let me do it. There we go. Whoops. There we go. If I want 2 to the third, I'm going to type a 2. And then it's called a caret key. It looks like an up arrow. Any of the calculators I lend it out, that's how you do an exponent on yours. Some of you have like a Y to the X key on yours. And then we just type whatever our exponent is. If you can't get 8 on your calculator, raise your hand so I can come help you out. I, I don't want us to have to sit there and do all the computation to do 2 times 2 times 2. I want us to use the technology for that. All right, so we've got the basics. Basic vocab, basic, hey, here's what 2 to the 3rd means. All right, so let's start in. There's three properties we need to review today. What I want to do is I'm just going to help you fill in the first row of the table. And then if you want to work with the people around you to fill in the rest of the table and come up with the rule, you can. If you want to try it on your own, you can. Give you a few minutes, and then we'll talk about that rule, make sure everybody's on the right track. So what is meant by expanded form? That's when we actually write out what 10 to the 4th means. So 10 to the 4th would be a 10 times a 10 times a 10 times a 10. And then 10 to the 2nd would be 10 times another 10. So when it says expanded, we want to write out how many times we're going to multiply that base. And then it says exponent form. If I wanted to condense that, what would I have? 10 to the what? 10 to the, and then there's six of them. So let's just take a few minutes. If you want to work with people around you, you can. Try out the last three rows of that table. And then see for part B if you can come up with, hey, what's the method? What's the shortcut? What's the shortcut? See if you can come up with it. If you have questions as you're expanding, guys, please let me know. All right, guys, as I'm walking around, let's take a little pause here. Everybody, that second row, guys, it looked great as I walked around. 
I'm going to just jot it down real quick. And we had an X to the seventh. That looked great as I walked around. I wanted to kind of hold this up, though. That third row, I'm seeing some interesting things. We have a 2Y to the fourth. That 4 exponent, what does that go with? Does it go with the 2 and the Y or just the Y? Just the Y. What's the exponent on the 2? The 4 just goes with the Y. So what's the exponent with the 2? Ah, oh, it's not nothing. Mathematicians are just too lazy to write it. It's a 1. Yeah. It's a 1. So what's the exponent on that 3 then? It's also a 1. So when I expand that out, I have a 2 to the first, so it's just a 2. And then I have a y, a y, a y, and a y. Then I just have a 3. And then the 2, that exponent of 2, just goes with the y. So I want to take a little pause here because I had some of us writing a whole bunch of 2s and 3s that we don't need. So just be careful on that. It's one of the reasons why I wanted you guys to try first. I wanted to see where we were at with understanding what the exponent goes with with how things are written. So that actually, that actually ends up being, what can we do with the 2 and the 3? We can multiply those. We get a 6. And then how many y's do we have? We actually have six of those, too. So go ahead and try out that last row. Think about, I have a four there, but what's the four's exponent? I have a negative three, but what is its exponent? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and expand out what I saw. Okay, so I had some people ask me, Ms. Gala, okay, so what do I do with that 4 and that negative 3? I multiply them. Yep, I just follow what the sign says. So it says to multiply negative 12, super impressed. Everybody that had a 12 there, guys, that I saw their paper, they had a negative. Awesome. Don't, don't miss out on those negative signs. Now that I have some x's and I have some y's, I have two different variables. So I'm going to have an x to the what? x to the 6. And then what about the y? Is there anything I can put together with that? Five. Oh, 5. I forgot some y's here, guys. 1, 2, 3 of them there. And I have a y to the 5th. So if I have to summarize, if I'm multiplying, common theme here is we're multiplying all those different powers. Remember, powers mean base with exponent. I'm multiplying those powers. How can we tell somebody how to do that without having to do that whole middle expand part? Because that can be a pain, especially if we get some bigger exponents and things. What do you think? Take a minute, jot down what you think, or just be thinking about it. If you're like, oh, I don't want to write yet. What do you think? What do you think? All right, talk to me, guys. How can we get somebody from that first column to last column without all that middle junk? Jonah, what do you think? Multiply the bases and add the exponents. Okay. So we're going to multiply. Now, by bases, do you mean like that 4 and that 3? Yeah. Okay. So those numbers are our coefficients. So we're going to multiply. That's one vocab word we didn't hit on. Coefficients. Coefficients. Those are just those plain old big numbers. They have an exponent of 1. Multiply the coefficients. I like that. It's a good start. And then what do we do the rest of it? Keep going, Jonah. Add the exponents together. Okay. Add exponents together. Now, can we get a little more specific? So on that last one, I had x's and y's. I didn't put all their exponents together. You've got to add the x's with the Okay, so add exponents together with 
the same, I'm going to use one of our vocab words, with the same base. So we're going to multiply those coefficients. Those are those plain numbers we had, like the 4 and negative 3, the 2 and the 3 in the second to last row. And then I'm going to put just a little side note here. Watch out for exponents of 1 because we don't write it there. Watch out for those exponents of 1. We still need to make sure we have those if we need to add or we're not counting a different exponent to go with something that oh, looks like it doesn't have 1. Okay. So for our first property, if we're multiplying powers, again, powers are those bases with the exponent. If we're multiplying powers, we said multiply any coefficients, add the exponents together with the same base. I think that sounds fantastic. I think that sums it up perfect. Let's refresh on our second big rule we have with exponents. Just like the last one, I want to do that first row with you, just so you know what it looks like to expand those. The first column says expand using the outer exponent. So my outer exponent is a 3. So I'm going to write 10 to the second three times because that's what the outside exponent tells me to do. Remember, the exponent tells us how many times to multiply something. So I'm going to take that 10 to the second, multiply it three times. The next column says expand using the remaining exponents. So 10 to the second, each one is just going to become that 10 times 10. And then that last column, our final form, will be our 10 to the sixth. So expand using the outside one, and then expand using that inside one. Let's see what we can come up with. I want to give you guys a few minutes to try. Just like the last one, we will talk about it. We'll make sure everybody's on the right track. And then we'll summarize what that rule says. I'm going to go ahead up here, guys, just so you can check. I'm going to do just the next couple so you can check. And a lot of people ask me about that third row. So I'm going to go ahead and just put some up here so you can check as you go. So then you can be thinking about that rule. When you get to that last row, guys, what I want you to think about is keeping in mind that 2 has an exponent of 1. It doesn't have, it doesn't have the 2 with it. And I'll be around if you're like, Miss Guy, that third row, I don't get it. I'll be around to check in. Let's talk about that last row. From what I'm seeing, guys, you guys are doing a really good job of expanding with that outside exponent. So you wrote what was in the parentheses four times. Awesome. Then from there is where we got a little shaky. So let's break down those exponents. Remember, all of these twos, their exponent is a one. That's where some of us were getting stuck. And I know, I wish mathematicians weren't that lazy and if it was an exponent of one, we put a one there. But those numbers happen a lot. So the 2, if I expand this one, the 2 is just a single 2 and then an xx. And then I have just a 2 and an xx. Another 2 and an xx. Another 2 and an xx. So those 2s are to the power of 1. So you just write them one time. Then let's follow our rule from up above. Those big twos, those coefficients, let's multiply them together. 
2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times another 2 is 16. Now, what I did see a couple people's papers, guys, I was super impressed with this. I saw a couple people that did this. They recognized that these were all 2s, and they did a 2 to the 4th. And then they did an x to the 8th. Awesome. If we have the same base, we can add the exponents. And those 2s all have an exponent of 1, which is also 16x to the 8th. So take a minute and look through, because I know, based on helping you guys out, you're like, Miss Guy, I don't, I don't like all this expanding out stuff. Give me the shortcut. Make my life easier. So look through that table. See if you can describe to somebody, how do I get from column 1 to column 4 without all that confusing, uh, expanding this exponent, that exponent? Which way did who go? See if you can come up with a method. All right, guys, as I walked around, I was like, oh, I just, I don't know how to say it, Miss Golly. I don't know how to say it. So let's do, let's do the easy part. Let's forget about that bottom row for a minute that has that two that's bugging some of us. The top three, how can I describe to somebody those top three rows, how to get from first column to last column? Easily. What do you think? How did we end up with a 10 to the 6 and x to the 6? How can we get there easily? Amber, what do you think? Yeah, so we're going to multiply those exponents. Multiply. Do you guys want to say inside exponent by the outside exponent? Yeah. Okay. Multiply all inside exponents by the outside exponent. And guess what, guys? That's going to take care of it for us. I know that bottom row is bugging you, but I'm going to put my same warning on as I did the first property. Watch out for exponents of 1. Because that's what, in that last row, that's what that 2 has. That 2 has an exponent of 1. So if we do 4 times 1, we get 2 to the 4th. Watch out for those exponents of 1. When I work with exponent properties, guys, and I go through, I draw in the little ones. I write them in. And then I don't miss them. It takes like half a second to do. Super quick. All right, we've got one more. We're doing the big three properties today. We've got one more. I'm going to get you guys some time to practice. And practice questions go pretty quick because you get to use all the shortcuts that we came up with. You don't have to expand. All right, the last one. The last one, if you go to the flip side, first column, it says expand it out. We're getting pretty good at that by now. Now, let's make this easy. That third column says simplify by reducing common factors. Factors are things we multiply together. I'm not going to rewrite everything in that next box. I'm going to do that third column right here. Simplify by reducing common factors. If I'm multiplying everything together, this 10 divided by 10 is just going to be a 1. This 10 divided by 10 is going to be a 1. That only works because I'm multiplying. If I'm adding or things, I can't cross things out like that. So what do I have left? If I simplify... All I have left is a 10 times 10. So try out those next rows. Expand out. Expand the top. Expand the bottom. Simplify what you can. Let's see what we come up with. Again, you can work with people around you if you want. No big deal. The second row is looking good as I'm walking around, so I'm going to go ahead and get that up here.
If you've got the table filled out, guys, think about how you would describe for part B to get from first column to last column. Guys, I forgot a W. It's been brought to my attention. I forgot a W. Sorry, guys. There we go. Now that bottom one's good. I forgot a W. All right, so we're going to divide the coefficients. And guys, I'm just going to put a little note here. That might just mean that we simplify the fraction. So when I had 5 over 10, that was 1 half. So divide the coefficients, it might just mean simplify the fraction. And we'll take just a little pause there while you catch up. All right, so we divide the coefficients, which might mean just simplify the fraction. And then we subtract exponents. with the same base. And I'm going to put a little side note here. It's always top minus bottom. So those are our different properties. You guys have the shortcuts. The expanding out part, I always like showing that so you know where the properties come from. But I also like to show it because if I get on, let's say, a quiz or test, and I'm like, oh, shoot, is this when I add? Or is this when I subtract? Or is it when I multiply? I can always expand it out and figure it out that way, too. Okay? So expanding out part, it wasn't to make your brain hurt or try to confuse you. It was to make sure we truly understand what the exponent means and where those properties come from. That's the idea with that. So what I want to do, I know we just wrote those three rules. What I want to do today is we're going to just do real quick a little, let me put it up here real quick, and I'm going to pass one out to you. We're going to create one spot for all of our rules. Hmm, it's not letting me draw. Okay. Looking at our graphic organizer, don't worry about the adding and subtracting one. We're not there yet. Scroll down to, or I can scroll down, go down to the product rule. So the product rule, that's the first one that we did when we were multiplying. Product means we're going to multiply. What did we do with those exponents? When we multiplied, what did we do with the exponents? If you need to check your investigation sheet, go ahead. What was the first thing we did? When we multiplied, what did we do with the exponents? We added them, yeah. So we're going to have an A plus B. Now that is our rule in symbols. That's what this graphic organizer is going to give us. Cut and dried, here's the rules. 
if you're like, oh, Miss Scott, I like how we wrote it out in words, then you can always use your investigation sheet that has examples and the rule and words on it. It's up to you. All right, so then off on the right-hand side, that far column, just a couple examples to illustrate the rule for us. So for number one, we would end up with H to the what? H to the eighth. Because we're going to add those exponents. Now the second one, it brings in some of those coefficients we talked about. What's going to happen with the negative 2 and the 7? We multiply those. So we have negative 14. And then we have a to the 5th. Now with your b's, be careful. If they don't have an exponent, you can give it 1 if you need it. We're going to have b to the what? 2nd. We have to be careful. Those exponents of 1, guys, they, they can get us all the time. We have to really watch out for those exponents of 1. Write them in if you need to. It doesn't take long. All right, our power rule is 2nd. That's where we have the exponent outside the parentheses. What was our shortcut? What did we do with the exponents? When we have the exponent outside the parentheses? Multiply, Multiply yeah. So we're going to have an x, and then we're going to have an a times b. If you want to put the dot for multiplication, if you want to use parentheses, if you want to use the little x, you can, up to you. I don't like to use a little x because then it looks like a variable instead of multiplication symbol sometimes. All right, so we have on the first one, we would end up with x to the what? Six. To the 6. Now, guys, on that bottom one, do me a favor on number 2. Scribble out that second piece on there. We don't need that yet. We'll get there. I want this organizer to be, yep, here's the basics of the properties. The reason why I like that second one is because of the negative 2 there. What's the exponent for the negative 2? It's a 1, yeah. So our rule said we're going to multiply those exponents. So I need to do 2 times 1, and then I need to do 5 times 2. The 5 goes with the M and not the negative 2. So we've got negative 2 to the second, and then we have m to the tenth. Now, you might be like, Miss Guy, why do you have that negative 2 in parentheses? If I don't put it in parentheses, I'm going to pop my calculator up here just real quick. If I just put negative 2, oh, if my calculator will work, it might be frozen. Darn it, it's frozen. You can go ahead and try it on yours if you want. If I just put negative 2 without the parentheses in my calculator, your calculator will square the 2, and then it will make it negative. It'll tell you the answer is negative 4. But that negative sign is in those parentheses. I need the negative to be included with that squared. So negative 2 squared should be 4. So if you have a negative and it's inside parentheses, you need to make sure you keep it inside parentheses if you need to check something on your calculator. I wish mine wasn't frozen. I apologize, guys. Last but not least, our quotient rule. That's the last one we did. Quotient means we're dividing. What did we do with those exponents when we divided? We subtracted them. Top minus bottom. If you need to make yourself a little note there that says top minus bottom, that's okay. We will be dealing with, again, some negative exponents in a couple classes. So sometimes when we subtract, we end up with a negative result, and that's okay. We're going to learn how to handle those. Not yet, but we'll get there. Now, for the examples, we're not quite ready for that second one yet. We're not going to worry about that one. But we will do example one. Example 1 has coefficients. It has a 27 and a 42. Now, if I just try to throw that in my calculator, I'm going to get some ugly decimal. I don't want that. We want to keep things as fractions. So I have a 27 and a 42. Hmm, what could go into both of those? 3 can. 
3 can go into 27 9 times. And it can go into 42. What do we got? 14. 14. There we go. Thank you. And then remember, the x on the bottom really has an exponent of 1. So we have 5 minus 1. We get an x to the 4th. Every time we subtract, everything's always going to start up top. Anytime we subtract. So we're going to divide those coefficients, which might just mean I simplify the fraction, and then we subtract our exponents. Now again, my hope is that this graphic organizer is kind of a one-stop shop for you when we do our practice problems. If you need it in words, you have your investigation sheet, which also has more examples on it too.